What's going on guys? Chips is here and we are back with another dungeon guide. We're going to be looking at the silver dungeon, the tower. In this video, last time we did the bronze mines dungeon with the mage. We're going to stick with the warrior this time around. So right off the bat, uh, you're going to be encountering these enemy types throughout the entire uh, silver dungeon. Even even into the you know other parts of the game as well. Um, these guys are very common. So the shield guys, they block all your attacks from the front. So attacking them head on it just is a bad idea because it triggers their attack, it triggers them to attack you immediately. So it's it's if if you're not, if you're uh, not sure what to do, uh, what you want to do is actually charge up your attack and use a charge attack and just run into them and take out their shields. So that'll leave them exposed and you could just attack them normally. Um, you did see another enemy down here, which is the mage. Now, mages are pretty much always the high priority targets in any room and any in any of the enemy types. There's there's always like this mage type that has the ability to revive one or even an entire group of downed uh, opponents. You want to take them out first because you don't want them to revive the entire room again and have to kill them all over again. So those guys, typically mages, are the higher priority targets here. Um, the shield guys, the they move straight at you, but they're pretty slow, so it's easy to just run around them and take out the mages. Typically, uh, you can also use your, you know, your abilities. We don't have any right now, but we'll get to that later in the video. So I'm just going to be taking those guys out, cleaning them up a little bit. Uh, I thought we, had, I thought we got an Ember Forge here, but then I realized it was an Infernite. Um, those guys can be pretty strong, but we take them out. I'm just uh, clicking my shield on and off there. So you're going to be encountering a pretty good amount of different enemies here. You got the dog and you got the shield guys. Um, the next time the dog comes up, I'll kind of talk about his AI a little bit more here. Like I said before, not just not just using your charge attack on the shield people, but using your charge attack as a warrior on a group of enemies is generally a really good idea. Um, unless you're Hassan and Renee, they typically like to take down one enemy at a time, and their charge attacks take up too much of their stamina bar. For warrior though, if you're fully upgraded, you can do like two charge attacks basically. So I'm just going to pick up an item here. I walk into every room with my charge attack ready to go. So I can just hit as many enemies with that and just start off the room strong. Uh, you encounter these guys. I'm just going to rewind here a little bit. So we have these invisible enemies, the thieves that like to... Uh, they're, they're, they're a little bit shy, right? So they like to... If they see you looking at them, they're going to run away and then disappear and then kind of reappear behind you. So basically... Whenever you see them disappear, they're pretty much always going to appear behind you. See, we got them appearing behind me there, and then they appear behind me on the left again. And then if you position yourself near a wall, let me rewind again. I'm going to get ready to pause here. So right here, I turn around, and they're starting to disappear. And they're starting to reappear on my left side now. I know the wall is right here, so I have my charge attack ready to just mow through all of them right there. And even if like the charge attack doesn't kill them, the wall is going to keep them right close by so I can do a, do a follow-up attack and just keep hitting them until they die. So positioning is super important against these guys. Just know, just be prepared for them to teleport behind you and get ready to attack them preemptively. Uh, holding your charge attack works. Um, using an ability can also work too, depending on your character. Here is just uh, a mage. You see both of them. Anytime you see, let me rewind here. Oops. Anytime you see the the yellow circle under them, that means they're trying to revive someone. And uh, this guy is only reviving one person. But as I said earlier in the video, there can be uh, mages that can revive a, a lot of enemies. And you'll see a giant yellow circle there, and that's when you know they're they're all about to revive them. So you better interrupt him. Uh, interrupt the guy, the mage that's rezzing as quickly as possible before he gets the rez off. And they both try to rez there, actually. 
took them both down though. Gonna pick up a shrine buff, always pick these up. We talked about it in the previous video. Um, they give you different stat boosts. Haste makes you faster and helps you tank two hits. Let's uh, keep moving along here. So anytime I enter one of these rooms where there's two enemies on each side, you know, focus on one side first. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, I usually focus on the easier side first because attacking like the left or the right side won't trigger the other enemies on the other side to attack you as well. So right here I get my charge attack. I just go in at the dogs. Um, I think there's a better clip later in the video that I'll talk about dogs and, and their AI and how it works and the best way to approach them. So right here we got the thieves. Like I said, they appear behind you. They do that again. They're, they're a little bit shy, guys. You know, you, you, got, you got to ease them into the conversation a bit, all right? So Gargoyles is another enemy type here. We got a thief here as well. I think I take a hit here. Oh, no, I don't. So he has two attacks. He has his fireball attack. Just rewind here. He has his fireball attack. It's a projectile. Um, you know, shoots across the room. Then he has his flamethrower attack, which he just did right there. So anytime you he takes enough damage, he goes into his uh, his rock form here to kind of heal himself a little bit, and then he'll explode. The explosion does do damage, so make sure you're far away from him, and then you can re-engage after the explosion happens. What I typically like to do is I will wait with the charge attack, I'm getting ready to hit him as soon as he explodes. Go in, get free double damage hit and then just auto him afterwards a dash attack walk around to the side then auto him all right so these guys are, are really difficult enemies the ink rates so what they like to do I, I guess i'll just play the clip they like to dash and then they like to shoot a bunch of fireballs so i'm gonna back up the clip here so as you notice, some of them shoot their patterns. They, they, they shoot their patterns differently. So we'll, we'll see the first one here. Notice how he fires it in a cross pattern, like a plus sign pattern. And, uh, well, it's kind, of, it's kind of messy there. He fires his in a cross, too. Uh, they either fire it in a plus sign pattern or an X pattern. So don't assume that they're going to be... Uh, firing in one pattern or the other and approach them too early. You want to let them shoot their fireballs off first, then either block it or dodge it, and then go in for the hit. You have to just let them get their aggression out of their system before you, uh, you, know, before you attack them. Uh, otherwise, you're going to end up trading hits with them. We're going to actually talk about their AI even more later in the video because they're, they're even trickier than that. Um, there's a lot of intricacies to how they work. So there are different types of dogs here. These like uh, light brown, you know, tan colored dogs, they're like the basic ones where they, if you approach them, they start kind of backpedaling a little bit. But um, they, they like to attack you as you attack them. Or they don't attack first and they'll attack you. Like let's say I hit him with my sword here because they keep just keep backing away. Okay, I just killed him too quickly there. But what they do is, like, after they take one hit, they, they start to become a little bit more aggressive, and they try to pounce on you. Now, the normal dogs, you can attack them, and they can just, even if they pounce at you, you can still attack them midair. But the the black versions, the the black dog version, they're, they have some sort of super armor where if you try to attack them during their pounce, they actually will trade hits with you. So against those guys, you want to let them land and then attack them as they land so you don't get hit by their pounce attack. Um, I don't think we got a clip of the black dog doing that. We might have. We, I don't I don't, uh, I don't remember. I will say this video is very special though. I'm very glad I recorded this run because I encountered something that in 200 hours of playing this game, I have not encountered. So uh, I'm very glad I was recording. We'll get to that later. Um, so here we go. Once again, these ink rates appear. So you'll notice the first one. 
he shoots his I, the pause is very laggy for me sorry guys it's it's very weird it's like i pa i press pause and then it just pauses like a like a half second later so it's yeah it's like laggy i don't know when i pause but this guy attacked in an x pattern as i was talking about these books they have really fast projectile attacks which is why i took damage there um these guys can be annoying because uh, certain versions of them, these like, I don't even know what to call them. They like shield the enemies around them. So like the enemies that are within their zone, they can't be killed. So you have to, sometimes if the enemies are, are too close to him, you have to kill him first, the invisible dude. Uh, so that's just a thing to keep in mind. I don't think we got, I don't think we had an... A situation where that really happened in this run but it's, like I said it's a good thing to know so right here I'm just kind of circling around them letting them get their get the aggression out of their system um, then I move in for the counter attacks you can charge up your charge attack and then just go in okay so right here let me demonstrate let me let me stop the video right here so let me go back a little bit more after I kill these two like I said, these these ink rates are very complex. So notice they these ink rates have not dashed yet, right? And after the dash, they do their fireball attack. So watch what happens here. So they just dashed, right? They did not do their fireball attack. So their AI works in a way where they only do their fireball attack after the dash if you are uh if you are close enough. But the thing is when you approach them, they let out their fireball attack anyways. So you have to be very careful. If you trigger their dash, but you don't trigger their fireballs, they're going to hold in their fireball attack to when you do get closer. And so if you, if you like, like right here, if I did my charge attack, I would have charged into all these fireballs if I didn't know that, uh, know that tidbit of information beforehand. So right here, I see the back one. I noticed he didn't fire off his fireball. And so I just let him fire it first before I committed to an attack. Uh, they're, they're kind of alternating attacks there, so I actually ended up getting hit. I should have blocked that, though. I'm just kind of observing his attack patterns, just kind of showing you guys. Let's uh, scrub on up ahead. So it's one of those invisible dudes. Another room, same thing happens here. I block that attack. I learned from my mistake. Take him out. Uh, I see some uh, some juicy loot here, but oh no, it's an ambush. I kind of play this a little bit wrong. I'd probably take a hit here. So this is actually a good learning moment here. So wardens are one of the toughest enemies you'll encounter uh, early on in the game. This is the silver dungeon, so second stage. So anytime they're swinging their weapon, if you attack them, they will automatically attack with their flail ahead of where they are facing. So never never attack them head on. What you want to do instead is you want to let them swing and then walk around them to their side right next to them and then just start attacking. You can also attack from the back if you want. Um, it's just faster to attack from the side. Now there is a different version of the same enemy in the game who uses a golden flail and the golden flail ones are one of the one of the hardest enemies you'll encounter uh just like the the floor units so what you want to do against those guys is the same exact thing uh so the gold ones the difference is when he f when he uh attacks with his flail when it lands it creates a shockwave so let's see he attacks where my mouse is it creates a little shockwave of damage that goes out in many different directions but to counter that is you want to stand next to the the warden on either the left or the right in a way that you're basically touching him if you stand too far away to the left or too far away to the right uh you'll end up taking shockwave damage even if you attack him from behind you'll also take shockwave damage so that's why i want to train you guys to just anytime you see any type of warden just attack them from exactly the side. Make sure you're touching them when you're attacking them. I know that sounds a little bit weird, but uh, it, just, just trust me on this one. 
Sorry, yeah, I'm just kind of demonstrating his uh, his attack pattern. Oh, I was trying to get him to attack me while he was swinging. So these two, the horned ones, like to dash at you in a straight line. So whenever they're about to dash at you, they're always going to have, like, let's say you're standing still and they're going to dash at you. Let me just rewind a little bit more. It's easier to demonstrate. So uh, I kind of interrupted that attack. So right here, right before he dashes, like, as soon as he starts flashing white, like, he's already chosen a direction to dash in, right? He's not going to change directions even if you move around. So keep that in mind. Anytime he's flashing white, like I said, he's, he's already chosen his direction of where he's going to attack you. So uh, he always attacks in a straight line. Use that to dodge around. You never want to dodge backwards because some of these enemies, um, and I, you can't really see it in this room, but they can. These guys can dash attack you and just keep going. So never dodge backwards. Always dodge around them. Uh, these ones in particular, they they don't have a very large dash distance. Um, you'll see the enemy over here is a mother slime. These are high priority targets by far in these slime rooms. I hate this area that I'm in, by the way. It's it's so there's not much maneuverability here. They just kind of swarm you. Um, mother slimes are absolutely uh, a high priority target in any any time you encounter them because they reproduce three slimes. Uh, they just kind of spit three slimes out of their body that turn into green slimes. If you're close to them while they are reproducing uh, these slimes, you will take damage instantly if those slimes land or if those projectiles are shot anywhere near you. So notice when I unpause that uh, the mother slime is going to be releasing slimes from our body. So anytime you are in the path of those slimes that she's releasing from her body, you'll automatically take damage unless you're blocking, of course. So right there, I took damage. Like I said, I was too close. I'm just trying to do a charge attack to take down multiple enemies. She's kind of far away, so I, I opt to, to throw my throwing axes right there. Take them both out. I'm just going to fast forward this. So right here, I'm just kind of demonstrating that these beam statues are... When you get close to the, close to them, they shoot a beam of light, and if you walk if you walk through it normally, you will get hit unless you have a shield up. But you know the strategy is to not waste your shield charges blocking these. The strategy is to generally just take them out. Right here, I have I know I'm cornered, so I opt to use my Drake Fire Grease so I can shoot these fireballs and just take out the enemies a lot faster. This fireball potion, Drake Fire Grease, it's amazing for DPS, which is why I typically save it for the boss fights, because it basically doubles your damage. And when you would combine it with attack canceling, um, it's just it just does wonders. So right here is actually where the rare encounter is. Um, so yeah, in my 200 plus hours of playing this game, I've not encountered this before and I was pretty sure that I had all the hats in the game uh, but I uh, you'll see that uh, that is not the case here so basically two guys are are guards or miners I think they're miners and they see a bunch of dogs that were trapped um, this this they're obviously all dead right now so that's why they're see we're seeing their ghosts kind of have this conversation so they see a bunch of dogs that are trapped here, and they say they'll come back for them. But as you'll see as I walk up, that uh, they did not come back for them. All the dogs, unfortunately, died. <laughs> they're they're actually a pretty tough enemy for the kit that I have. I don't have since I have Bane of Bones, it's, it's much harder to take them out because my leap attack sucks and my weapon just swings slower and, uh, uh, as a whole. So. I'm not gonna, we're not gonna watch all of this. It's just me mowing through waves with these guys. 
Uh, but finally, at the very end here, I will see something that I haven't seen in a very long time. Which is a skull chest. I have not seen one of these in, I don't know how many hours, dozens and dozens of hours. Because I have everything else unlocked. So when you have everything unlocked, every skull chest turns into a normal chest. So seeing one more skull chest uh, definitely made me happy there. You can see my hat collection briefly. I'm just kind of looking for that hat. want to put it back on. Wherever it is, there it is. Bone Hound Skull. All right, we're just gonna make our way through here. Gonna... Okay, so here's actually where I finally demonstrate attack canceling. And there is actually a black dog here. So right there, I attack him after the pounce. I tried to catch him with my leap attack. So notice how slow my weapon swings. So right here, I'm just gonna demonstrate how much faster I can take down that statue with attack canceling. And you can check out right there how much slower my normal attack speed is versus attack canceling. So how do you attack cancel? Let me just rewind it once again so I can teach you guys. The way to attack cancel, it's exactly how it sounds. You first do your attack and then you cancel it with your shield. You want to make sure you get the timing down because you might cancel your attack from doing any damage altogether. Um, you can also use throwing axes instead of your shield, but obviously anytime you use a throwing axe, you're going to waste a charge. Whereas when you use a shield, you're just breaking up your shield, you're not wasting it. So right there, it's just, it's a, it's a really, it's a higher level technique. Um, you don't need to use it, but if you, if you can use it, absolutely use it. So yeah, let me, let me demonstrate that too really quick. This is a really fun, not fun, but very, very useful and kind of an advanced tactic here. If you have a projectile attack and you aim it between both of the enemies, you can actually hit them both. So right here, look at that. I threw my throwing axe. Let's just demonstrate it again. Oops, rewind it a little bit too much there. So watch my throwing axe. It's gonna, I'm gonna hit it in between them and it hits them both. So it's like a two for one, two for one deal right there. Right up ahead is the boss. We have 10 shield charges. And yeah, we've got a lot of shield charges. We've got 11 now, maxed out with shields. We still have our haste buff, which makes us go faster, makes us tank a few hits. So one small thing to note here, I don't have any throwing axes. So right after he's done talking, you can actually, if you have a projectile weapon, you can actually hit him right before he teleports into the arena. And every time he teleports into the arena, he does the same attack. Or anytime he teleports and reappears, he does the same attack right here. He does this dash attack and then this explosion. So the dash attack is in a straight line, just dodge around. You typically want to dodge around him throughout the entire fight as opposed to dodging simply backwards because he'll chase you and he'll end up hitting you a lot of the time. Unless you're really far away. So notice my positioning this fight too. I try to get him in a way, get him in a position where he attacks his own enemies, and that helps me out. Like I said, dodge around him. So I'll be showing you more ways to abuse him. So I kind of dodge diagonally there. So after he does like a main attack, he waits around, right? So let me let me just rewind here and teach you guys something. So that's like his one of his main attacks right there, that one that big dash explosion attack. So then he backwards dodges, right? So when he backwards dodges, if you get close enough to him, he will do a normal swing. Now that's really important because when you bait out that normal swing after you dodge it, then you go in and attack him. So you can abuse this every single time after he does like a main attack. He'll do this like normal sword slash when you get close enough to him. 
See, he does that, and then you can get one or two licks on him, get one or two attacks on him. Um, I should have demonstrated it there, too. It's a little awkward playing with the slower weapon here. Um, for some reason, he, he didn't hit that guy. So he disappeared. He's going to do his flaming dash attack. I'm just kind of clearing out the waves of enemies. I want to get them... I want to get their shields off a little bit so that when he attacks them, they'll automatically die. But uh, more and more keep spawning here. So I use my dash attack to get behind him. He's going to do his flaming charge attack again. Dash attack for initiate. I'm going to take him down. I'm going to let him attack. Dodge out of the way right there. Attack him once. He disappears. He reappears. Flame dash. Attack after the dash. Does his normal attack. Okay, so anytime he says be gone, anytime he says be gone, let me just rewind. Anytime he says be gone, he will do three dashes at you in a straight line. At wherever your location is. So get ready to repeatedly dodge out of the way. I got kind of cornered there. I wasn't spaced out properly. Right there, I just pop up my shield because I was going to take damage. I didn't have enough time to dodge. Shield that again. Shield it again. And boom, boom. Um, after you bait out his normal attacks, you can either dash behind him if you have a dash. Or you can just shield it. But the best thing to do is to dodge out of the way and then counterattack. So guys... That's going to do it for this video. Sorry this video got way too long. Um, I'll probably try to trim it down a bit. But yeah, just uh, don't be too hasty when you're attacking the boss. Just kind of let him do an attack or two first. Let him attack, do a couple counterattacks, a one-two after his attack, and then he'll attack. He'll do a small swing, and then you'll hit him with one or two more attacks. It just It's just kind of a... a like an inch by inch boss battle. Um, but yeah, guys, that's going to do it for this dungeon guide number two. Uh, next time we're going to be looking at the gold dungeon. And that's going to be a lot of fun. I don't know who I'm going to use yet. But uh, anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.